When you lay down your paper, you probably want to lay it down so that it is parallel to the uh, ruler, even though you don't really need to. I mean, if you're still drawing a square, it's going to be square. But it will look off if you're not relatively close to being square on your uh, paper in the first place, because the outside of the paper does frame your work. Um, when I was drafting these things really big, I would have um, three dozen of these pencils. And I would sharpen them all. And I'd put them in a cup over here on one side. And I'd have a cup over here that was empty. And I would use my pencil for my lines. And um, this is a lighting template. It's a half inch lighting template. And it's, what, it's the type of template I use to do this uh, drafting. And so you hold the template in place. And this is space. This is designed by a guy named Steve Shelley, who also wrote a terrific book uh, for uh, lighting paperwork. But these are all spaced evenly on 18 inch centers. And so when you're doing your work, you take your light um, and you take your pencil inside this template and you draw your line. And then you move it over to do your next light. And if you want 18 inches, you put the first one in that hole, which is where it is, and then I know the next one is over 18 inches. So there's my next one. Now what's going to end up happening as I'm drawing, is What's the difference between those four lights? Last two are darker. The last two are darker because the line is getting thicker because I'm wearing down the pencil. So drafting something like that, I would do two lights per pencil. An additional technique to keep consistent line weight is if we have taken my pencil and I draw it like this, look what happens with my line. It starts It's thicker at one end than the other. That's inconsistent line weight. You've got to watch out for that. So I'm going to take a new pencil, and this time I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to change how I'm going to hold the pencil. I'm holding the pencil the same way, but I'm going to turn it, okay, which gives you a more consistent line as you're turning it because it keeps sort of the pencil sharp. Because this pencil here, it's now got an edge which is slightly slanted. So I can draw like this, and it gives me a, a beveled edge which now, which actually comes in handy sometimes. On my drafting table, I would have a piece of sandpaper on the drafting table. So if I really need to do a sharp, fine edge, I could sand down my pencil. I can do it here, too. A very fine piece of sandpaper. Now I have a, bevel, bevel, a beveled edge. So if I turn it the right way, I actually have a quite, a very fine line because of that beveled edge. So if I'm doing a lot of drafting and I have to do a line of the edge of a platform and then I need to go back and I need to do a dimension line, I can turn the pencil so I have the bevel helping me and there's my dimension line, which is always thinner than my actual line. It's a way of speeding up your drawing. So pencil control, rotating the pencil. Something else you're going to find that will get uh, challenging for you is that this line right here, here's a straight edge. But watch what happens with my hand. I'm, I'm not adjusting. I do this. Now it's a crooked line. Because the edge of this uh, parallel rule is kind of tall. And so depending on the, what angle I draw my line at, that's going to make a big difference as to where the line is. I could draw it like that, and it's all the way over there. Or I can change my angle on my pencil, and the line is all the way over here. Which can be a major problem in your measurements and being accurate. If you get consistent, a one by three. How thick is a one by three piece of lumber? Three quarter inches. Three quarter by two and a half inches. Um, depending on what your shop uses, we use two and a half inches. So I can draw a line like this for a one by three, and then I can also draw a line like this for the other side of the one by three. Now, if I take my scale ruler and I measure this in half inch scale. I'm pretty darn close. You just need to get consistent at it, and you can draw both lines without having to measure and move your ruler. And it's a great help. Makes drafting much, much faster. 
Now the angle that you use on this is going to be different than the angle you might use on this. So if I do this like that, and then I come out like that, that's a different width of line, a different distance, depending on how you angle your pencil. But again, these are just different techniques. If you're drawing a rectangle, I'll draw one over here, we can actually start here, go down and over, and then flip your ruler over and your triangle, and you come over and down. There's your rectangle. You've done two sides each time with only moving your tools once. Speed, speed, speed. Um, with relative accuracy. Now obviously we need to measure. When you're using your, uh, your rulers for measuring, use them for measuring. Do not get into the habit of using them to actually draw a line. Like this one here, from six inches to zero, and let's say six feet, you really want to, uh, instead of using this as your uh, drawing edge, I mean, you could do it if you have to do it fast, and you're, I'm not telling you to, right? There's my line right there. But you really should be using your straight edge. And use your measuring device for measuring and your straight edge for drawing. And something you want to avoid, because it just will mess you up. At some point, you'll, be, you'll kick yourself, is doing this. You, you can measure this way using your uh, your scale roller, your triangle, but you'll notice as I'm pushing it up, up under here that the triangle is lifting off the table and so this line might not actually be vertical relating to the triangle. So you got to double check how you're using your tools because this wants to lift up the triangle and if it's wedged under there at all at an angle and you don't notice it because you're tired and you're holding it like that, boy that feels straight, but it's not. 